Hello everyone, welcome back to Relax with Animal Facts. I am Steph Wolf, and today I am going to be learning with you about our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends, and in today's case, it is definitely going to be a furry friend of ours, because we are covering the oh-so-wonderful skunk. This is a very special listener episode dedicated to Audrey, Samantha, Jennifer, Darg, and Danielle. I thank you all for taking the time to write into the show, and I hope you enjoy your very own episode. For how to send in your very own animal request, and for all of the facts that were in this episode, you can either go into the show notes or the description, or you can wait until the end where I will talk about all of that. And if you would like exclusive content for as little as $1 a month, you can go to patreon.com slash relaxwithanimalfacts. We are just finishing up the Animal Mechanism miniseries, and we will be talking more about extinct animals and all the other kinds. Before we hop right into the show, I just want to say thank you, thank you. About a week ago, I posted that crowdfunding announcement, basically asking for help in paying for ambiances for the show. It is quite the feeling to put out something like that, and then to wake up to so many of you donating to the show for help. At the time of this recording, all of you collectively have donated the full amount. And so hopefully by next week we can start plunging into some of the most remote places on earth. I can't tell you how excited I am. And I have said it before, but allow me to say it again without sounding cheesy. You as a listener is what makes this podcast special. It is such a pleasure to host a podcast with such a vibrant audience. Our animal podcast family is growing and growing. If you didn't join me every week, I would simply be a guy who sits and reads facts to himself alone. Now, there might not be anything particularly wrong with that, but it most certainly would not be this podcast. You guys just always give me so many opportunities to exercise gratitude, and this is simply another one of those moments. That is my long-winded way of saying thank you. I said that we would leave long intros to the past, but today I made an exception. But now, let us begin to wind down a little bit. As always, I have three primary exhortations for you. The first is that you put on a comfortable pair of hiking or running shoes. We are certainly going to be needing it for where we are going. The second thing I encourage you to do is to perhaps realize where you are carrying some tension. Is it in the neck, the shoulders, the head? Maybe it's in the legs. Maybe you just ran a marathon. Who knows? Everyone here is different, but my exhortation to you is the same. You can bring up in your mind some jello and do your best to impersonate it. Basically, attempt to relax whatever it is that you are tensing and steal the Oscar from Leonardo DiCaprio just one more time for your performance as Jello. And the third thing I encourage you to do is to give your mind permission to wander and journey with me into a forest in the United States where the skunk resides. Now, you may have noticed that I didn't choose any particular state. Of course, skunks are not going to be present in every single one, but skunks are fairly common through Canada and the United States. And so if you are a listener in the U.S., perhaps you can imagine we are going through a forest in your backyard, maybe where you have seen a skunk many a time before. And this episode is one of those special ones. Here on the show, you may have all noticed that I love to kind of exalt the ordinary. I find it almost to be a kind of profound reality that it is those things most ordinary or most common that can tell us the most. And so here we are skulking around for some skunks. Skunks are also called polecats, that is P-O-L-E-C-A-T. 
They are a black and white mammal, and they are found primarily in the Western Hemisphere. So perhaps if you are listening from far, far out east, the skunk might actually seem like something exotic. The skunk we are mainly referring to today is the well-known striped skunk, but there are more skunks than just them. The skunk family has four genera in it, and within those four genera, there are 12 distinct species, and here in the Western Hemisphere, we have 10 of them. Today, we are in a forest, but we could also be in a desert or a mountain. They can inhabit a wide variety of habitats that includes some urban environments as well. And so the common striped skunk that we are mostly setting our sights on is found from central Canada all the way south throughout the U.S. and even to northern Mexico. They are about the size of a house cat. There are some that are smaller, some that are slightly bigger. I suppose it would depend on the house cat as well. But the adults will grow from between 47 to 82 centimeters, that's around 18 to 32 inches, and weigh up to 13 pounds, about 6.3 kilograms. It is important to mention right off the bat what the skunk is most known for that we are going to go into a little more depth in a moment, but they are mostly known for their defense mechanism in which they release this not-so-great-smelling scent. Maybe we will see together that there is more than meets the eye to this as well. And it may be a surprise, but the stripes on a striped skunk are not exactly all that random. There will be some minor variation, but there are some patterns that are repeated individual to individual. For example, their fur is typically black, and they will have a white V going down their back. Between their eyes, they will sport a white little bar of hair, and they will have some whiteness on their shaggy tail as well. So we are covering skunks as a whole today, but in the future we can go into individual skunk species. As we covered earlier, there are 12 different kinds. Some examples are the hog-nosed skunk, the eastern spotted skunk, the pygmy spotted skunk, and so I look forward in the future to covering some of those. But the largest of all of the skunk species is the eastern hog-nosed skunk. It will grow between 28 to 32 inches, which is around 70 to 80 centimeters, and weigh from between 4 to 9 or 10 pounds, around 2 to 4 and a half kilos. And as we travel deeper into the forest and get a little bit up close and personal with the skunk, Keep in mind that on your own adventures, it is probably not a good idea to get all that close. They can be threatened by the most well-intentioned person. And while we are here, we should talk about that stinky spray of theirs. When they get scared, skunks will shoot a smelly, oily substance from a gland that is located beneath their tails. This may be a surprise, but they actually have some range on that. They can shoot that spray up to 10 feet away, which is around 3 meters. You don't have to worry about the spray being actually harmful to your skin in any way. It will only just make you very, very smelly. And at that, it can make you very, very smelly for quite some time. It can last for days. If you see the spotted skunk go into a kind of handstand with their front paws and aim their tail while they are maintaining direct eye contact with you, this threatened posture is likely to very soon end up in you being sprayed. But remember, this is a defense mechanism for the skunk. It is not some sort of offensive weapon. This defense, as you can imagine, works quite well. Now for the would-be predator, this is a stinky message that basically reads, If I smell like this, imagine how I taste. The skunk has continued to spray and spray through the generations, and so clearly many animals believe their message. 
Skunks are carnivores. Most skunks eat whatever is really available, which includes bugs and insects during the springtime, and then small animals in the fall and winter. Most skunks have a diet that is carnivorous, which would include food like bugs and insects during the summer and springtime, and then small animals in the winter and fall time. They will also sometimes eat leaves or maybe the occasional berry. They don't seem to be too discerning as to what they actually eat. One interesting fact is that the skunk can take from between 10 to 12 days to fully replenish their stinky supply. So this is why it is not actually in the skunk's best interest to go around spraying everybody. In the wild, they will live to be between two and four years old. Skunks are also nocturnal, which means they are active mostly during the night time. And during this active time, they will be doing their hunting and whatnot. They will also be doing their digging during this time. They have long nails and strong forefeet, which makes them very good diggers. You might see on your own lawn, depending on where you are in the West, holes. You might find holes in gardens and golf courses. This is because when they do not have any other form of shelter, they will instead build their own. They can even burrow beneath buildings by entering the openings in the foundation. These guys are resourceful. One fact that I find amazing is that skunks are immune to snake venom. It is not only the mongoose or the likes of the honey badger, skunks are also known to eat poisonous snakes like rattlesnakes. That little striped skunk running through the yard or running in the forest is actually a snake venom resistant terminator. Some may think that because they let out such a gross-smelling substance that their smell must not be very good, but they actually have quite exceptional senses of both hearing and smell. Their eyesight, however, is not the greatest, and so smell and hearing become of the utmost importance for their survival in the wild. You have to wonder if a skunk being sprayed by another skunk is really bothered by it or not. And when a group of skunks get together, they are called a surfeit. I have no idea why that is or what that means. That is spelled S-U-R-F-E-I-T. It looks to be of either French or German origin, but perhaps I am wrong. Female skunks give birth to baby skunks every year. Their gestation period or how long they carry their babies for is around two months and they will give birth to their young from between two to ten offspring at one time. A familiar name for these baby skunks is kits. And these kits or baby skunks are completely blind when they are born. They cannot see because their eyes are sealed shut until about three weeks of age. When they are around 10 to 12 months of age, they will then leave their parents as the weaning process is over and go off to maybe have their own baby skunks or kits. Keep in mind that their lifespan is quite short, around three years on average, with captivity being a little bit longer from between seven to eight years. And so after they are adults, they have around two years on average in the wild to have baby skunks of their own. Now let us move on to the name of the animal, skunk. What does it mean? Or perhaps where does it come from? So a skunk is described as a common weasel-like mammal of North America and emits a fetid odor when threatened. This usage was coined in the 1630s and originates from actually a proto-Algonquian word. I am without the capacity to pronounce this word, and this proto-Algonquian word is a combination of two other words. The words mean to urinate and fox. And so the skunk, from a proto-Algonquian perspective, would be described as a urinating fox. We can of course see how this could be used to describe the skunk. 
And now let us move on to the review of the episode. This review was written by Pipe, who wrote all the way from Canada. Well, not all the way for me, but for many of you. And Pipe writes, Seriously can't sleep? Better sleep and other sleep apps not only can be ineffective, but also expensive. This podcast might prove a solution and a budget saver. Stefan's soothing voice, and with no background noise, has helped my sleep problems for over a week straight after months of struggling. It's so effective, I don't know which ones I've listened to and which ones I've slept through. 100% Patreon supporter, this guy earned it. Thank you, Pipe, for that very glowing review. I am so happy that, for you personally, the show has been such a help. It is always such a joy for me to hear and, honestly, a huge encouragement for gratitude when I learn of how the show is helping all of you out there. And Pipe, I am just glad that you are a part of the show. If the show helps you, or even if you wish the show was better in some way, leaving a review is one of the biggest things that you can do. Biggest in terms of impact, but most definitely not in terms of your time. In under a minute, you can help the show grow, you can make it better. The show has grown so much from your feedback. For those of you that would like your very own animal episode, you can send in your animal request by going to relaxwithanimalfacts.com and clicking on the Animal Request tab. I try my best to respond to each and every one of you. Just the other day, I noticed I missed a couple of you. If I ever didn't reply to you, say it has been over two weeks or something, please send another message. It just means you got lost in the shuffle. It's not because I didn't want to reply to you. And for those of you that want more of the show and want more of it for only $1 a month, you can go to patreon.com slash relaxwithanimalfacts and help support the show while listening to the show that you love. All of the facts that were used in this episode came from livescience.com, britannica.com, thefurbearers.com, etimonline.com, and haveaheart.com. This episode wouldn't have been possible without those resources, and I encourage you to check them out. What an amazing creature we have covered today. Again, a creature that might be treated as common or as quite ordinary. But who knew this ordinary creature could go toe-to-toe with some of the most exotic rattlesnakes? What a champ. I look forward to seeing all of you on the next podcast episode with the next animal. Take care.